Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of our top 100 interview. My name is Jacqueline and I am the program, uh, I'm the project manager of the other 100 and today we will be speaking to our, one of our top 100 from Croatia and her name is Mary. So let's just give it a, a second for everyone else to join in. Hello! So I see George. Uh, I suppose you're in Paris or France. <laughs> so right now we are, uh, I'm at the office today, not at home because it's a weekday. Um, so I'm going live, speaking live to you from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, where our ASEAN office is. So our headquarters is in Hong Kong. So let's just give it a minute for everyone else to join. <clears throat> So maybe while we are waiting, uh, let me just introduce a little bit uh, about our guest today. So Mary is our top 100 from Croatia. Um, she is born and raised in Sydney, Australia. And uh, Mary moved to, um, yeah, Mary moved to Croatia in 1992 after finishing her, uh, her BA majoring in music and French. And then she attended uh, courses uh, in Croatia as well. So let me see. So Mary is here, so let's get her on. Hi guys, thank you so much for joining me. So Hi, let's see, Hi, right. Mary is joining us from Croatia. If you just joined uh, our live broadcast, my name is Jacqueline. I am the project manager for the other 100. And today we Hi, will be doing me? another uh, interview with our top 100, and that is Mary from Croatia. So let's just give it a little bit of time to connect. So I understand that um, everywhere else the internet connection is not the same. So let's just be a little bit more patient as we have um, a guest and audience from all over the world. And the beauty of this project and um, this platform as well is that we can all uh, get together no matter uh, which part of the world we're at. So if you are online and you are watching this uh, broadcast, do say hi. And I will go through the chat and see if you have left any messages uh, for me. Feel free to, to leave me messages. I'll, I, I will read them on air. So, oh, George, you are at uh, UK instead of France, because I assume that you're, you're, uh, you are in France because your story actually won the, the, as the French uh, representative. So Mary had a little bit of problem with her internet. Let's just wait for a while. Mary, if you're still on, do uh, try again to tune in and request to join. One second. Now, so uh, while we wait for Mary, if you have not checked out her story, uh, her story is really, really interesting. It's about an artist who uh, put up a nice piece of art, uh, a knitting art on uh, a wall in Croatia uh, where the earthquake had just happened. And the cool thing about this story is that um, it involves uh, using art to heal the public and the public loves it. So let's see if we can get... Uh, Mary back online again. For those of you who joined, oh, oh hi. Hey, um, Jacqueline, there was something wrong with the connection, I think. Uh, I don't no know, I, didn't, I wasn't able to see you. Hi, Jacqueline, hi, everyone. <laughs> no it's great problem. being here. <laughs> right, so uh, Mary, you are uh, in Croatia right now? Yes, I am, definitely, in Zagreb, in a very foggy and uh, overcast Zagreb. <laughs> I see. So right now, you uh, it will be win winter now? Well, it's uh, almost winter. We're still in autumn. So officially, winter starts on the 21st of December when it's the winter solstice. So still in autumn. <laughs> I see. What's the temperature there? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't been out today, I must say, but I think it's around somewhere around five or six degrees. So it's pretty chilly. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> is. It is where I am. It's always summer all year long. <laughs> We're at the uh, equator. Yeah, you guys are lucky. You've got sun all around. <laughs> but sometimes we, we do miss a little bit of the, uh, you know, having white Christmas. 
Yeah, I can understand that being from Australia. We used to have barbecues and stuff for Christmas, which is a bit weird in Croatia and Europe. So, <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. So I think let's just dive in with, uh, with our chat today. So okay. how did you end up in, in uh, Croatia exactly? Because you, you are born and raised in Sydney, Australia. And, right. uh, and it, it is, how did you, why did you pick Croatia as a place to study music and French? Well, I actually finished um, university in Sydney um, in Australia at the University of New South Wales. So when I finished my studies, I decided to take a trip to Croatia because uh, although I was born in Sydney, um, my parents are Croatian. So I was born of Croatian background and uh, I do have family here, so, and I did and still do. So I decided to visit them after I completed my studies and um yeah during my trip i met my husband and it's been a holiday ah, since. <laughs> i see yes. so it was love that locked you down yes, in Croatia. definitely definitely love that locked me here <laughs> that's a lovely way. story Thanks. and um so you your forte if i look at your feed uh uh, the marvels of daily life. It's uh, you. Your specialty is more for uh, on black and white photography, and yeah, I see that you right. have very kindly break your pattern on your feed to, <laughs> to feature <laughs> one color entity that's us. So maybe just give us a little bit of a uh, uh, um, walk through how your photography journey uh, was. How did you start it, and why did you pick? Um, black and white and more of a street photography as your as your area of interest yes 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 um so i started like being interested in photography i think i would say when i came to croatia in 1992 um back then i had like a compact camera that was like uh, I think my mum bought it in 1985 so it was really <laughs> old even back then but um like cameras weren't changing so often as they do nowadays so it was still okay and it was okay for my needs it was an old Nikon with a, a fixed 35 millimeter lens I think and to this day I still love the 35 millimeter lens um as a lens like yeah and uh so I started taking photos around Zagreb and um and after that I became more and more immersed and I think it was in 1995, I believe, that I I bought a Leica, a Leica R4. I couldn't afford an M series, unfortunately, but <laughs> I did love the Leica. And so I decided to buy the R4. And at the same time, I went to a photo course or photo courses, I should say, at the um, Zagreb Photo Club. Um, after that, I got married and then I had kids and, well, yeah, it was all too much, so I had to I had to hang up the camera for a while. I mean, I did continue taking photos of my family and stuff, but um, it was more, you know, like snapshots and stuff like that. And um, then a little over four years ago, uh, I went on the Camino de Santiago. Uh, I had already been um, through France and through Spain, but specifically four and a half years ago, I went from Porto in Portugal and I walked all the way to Santiago de Compostela in Spain with my uh, eldest son. And it was there that somehow my love of photography was reignited and uh, as soon as I came back to Zagreb, I only had the iPad with me back then, which I still have, and I'm doing this live from it. Um, and uh, But, yeah, something happened on that journey, and uh, I felt that I needed to take up photography again. So I enrolled in a new course at the Zagreb Photo Club because back in 95 we only had analog film uh, right so I had never used a digital camera before so I had to like jog my memory how to do aperture and shutter speed and ISO and all that and yeah and ever since yeah I've been taking photos every day <laughs> I see but you know I think a lot of people who are um who have gone through the analog uh, era would find it quite overwhelming to, to, to move on into the digital, uh, mm -hmm. with the digital equipment. So maybe yeah. um, 
for the for the benefit of of our audience here some some may also share the same sentiment like oh i used to use analog but um i find it so difficult to transition into the digital or vice versa people who wants to yeah. um uh explore something uh something different in terms of the equipment they use so you know how did you make the transition i know you took a course uh yeah. that's i suppose the first step but is there more to that did you did you have to do a lot of practice and uh, you know ask them yes definitely definitely i mean with any uh like i come from a musical background so as you as i said like i studied music in australia and i continue to sing um and have a band and all that and so coming from a musical background it's practice 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 you know uh, and i mean daily practice definitely um even if it's just taking a few photos a day try to make them meaningful and try to learn from every photo you take you know when i go back and look at my old photos i literally cringe you know <laughs> i mean and i am sure in a year's time i will look at the photos i take today and i will cringe as well you know <laughs> so it's really a matter of lots and lots of practice um i would say like in terms of uh photography definitely learn about light and composition the latest cameras yeah they'll give you higher isos you'll be able to do night photography like handheld and stuff like that but they won't improve your photography if you don't know about light and composition i mean just the word photography means writing with light so make light your best friend you know learn about how the different angles work you know whether you light someone from above from below from the side backlit etc etc the different types of light for example um so no offense to any anybody out there but i think that portugal being portugal because i had gone from france as i said to spain to santiago from saint jean pied de port to santiago de compostela but the portuguese light is so amazing truly i think i think that, that was light. yes i know that's going to sound weird and i don't want to offend anyone out there <laughs> no non portuguese people to you know but but it was just amazing the light there is something something else and i think that was as well what really like influenced me to go back to photography it was really amazing mm. so that's, get to know light yeah Good. and go to courses watch youtube videos practice yourself learn from your mistakes learn from the good stuff you do um and and a really important thing is to learn your camera because every camera is different you know like um i've had my nikon now for the one that i have at uh, at present for 3 years now and it's like you know i i almost know what back back to front inside out i don't even have to look at the dolls anymore i just know it intuitively mm -hmm. so that's really important especially for street mm -hmm. photography and if you're a street photographer or a documentary photographer something that i learned early on the second thing i bought after my camera was a camera backpack have your camera with you always it's really mm -hmm. important <laughs> to me anyway as a street photographer and documentary photographer because stories are happening all the time around us Yeah. And, and and you know your your process sounds like um a very a very slow process in terms of learning and analyzing finding the the right composition the right light. Um do do you feel there is a as a change in how quickly photos turn around these days that oh yeah you know they, people don't take time to really appreciate each each uh, uh you know the photo taking process and even yes. when when it's after it's it's developed uh 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 on your computer or or a physical photo um you know there's something that's missing in the middle of of all this speeding up you know with better equipment uh the turnaround time is shorter so do do you see the change absolutely totally like back in the day when it was just analog photography you would you would wait sometimes for a week or so to see your photos you weren't able to see them there was no screen there was no way to see what you had taken so in a way it was it was actually quite fun you know to to um you know wait for the moment like wow what what turned out you know sometimes it would be most often it would be disappointing <laughs> to be honest <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, um, but oftentimes it would be a pleasant surprise too, you know. So it was that anticipation which we don't have anymore. We live in a instant, let's say, society, you know, where everything is instantaneous from coffee to photography to everything. So, yeah, yeah even your parcels yeah. arrive faster. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. And I, I mean, look at the news before we didn't have the internet, you know, you'd have to wait for the next morning paper to see what had happened in the world or listen to the radio. Nowadays, mm -hmm. it's instantaneous. You have people mm -hmm. with their mobile phones taking live videos as it happens. Yeah, I so see. it's changed, definitely. Yeah. Um, and, and also, I'm just really curious that when you have all the colors in the world for you to capture, why would you want to pick uh, black and white or monochrome? Because, uh, yeah, yeah so, so what's your, your rationale for that? I think all the black and white phot photography fans here would be, would be rooting for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, it is perhaps a bit strange in our world. And, I mean, we have colour. We have had colour since uh, Kodachrome and all the old uh, film, uh, film uh, stocks. But why did I choose black and white? Because... Well, first of all, I'm pretty old school, as you can see from my photos, you know. Um, uh, back in 95, I learned mostly from the old uh, humanist uh, photographers like Duanon, mm -hmm. Cartier Bresson, um, Elliot Erwitt, etc. They were my, let's say in inverted commas, heroes, and they still are. So I was uh, very influenced by their work, and their work was black and white, yeah. Um, I also did a lot of analog work in black and white as well. So I think it's just that. And, you know, there's, an old, there's a saying somewhere, I'm not sure exactly how it goes, but it's something like colour uh, tells a story, but black and white, you know, shows the soul. And that's my real belief because you're not taken away by... So, for example, if you see someone in a red coat walking down a street, um, in black and white you wouldn't see that red coat. But if the light was right... Um, it would be a beautiful scene nonetheless, despite the fact not seeing the red coat or if she was doing something like, you know, uh, raising her hands for a taxi or something, it would be a story there, yeah? So with black and white, it's light, it's composition, it's the story, yeah. So it's more difficult, I would say, to do. And, um, yeah, why? And you asked, like, you were surprised that I chose the colour for the other hundred, yeah, entry. Well, I felt that I needed to do mm -hmm. that in colour because of the, it wasn't, I wasn't able to convey the feelings I felt, the feelings of hope and joy that uh, despite the earthquake, despite COVID-19, that Ivorna's heart evoked, despite the fact that it was broken, you know, it was still stitched together and I needed to show the red, the yellow wall, the blue string holding the heart together. So, yeah, yeah, that was that was my decision to do it in colour, despite the fact that I usually work in black and white, yeah. But I black and white is much more difficult, much more difficult. It is, it is. I think, yeah, you, you, you don't have... Uh, uh, the tool, the colors as your tool to, to, to tell yeah. a different kind of story. But yeah, we, we love uh, the entry you sent us. It's, oh, thank um, you. it's quite, yeah, it's quite unique. Um, and believe me, um, going through 600 entries, we have a lot of morbid ones. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so yes, I, quite refreshing to see something like that, that is, uh, you know, conveying the, the power of healing through art and it's two artists working together. Yeah, you know, you yeah, as yeah. artist, so uh, Yvonne as an artist. Yeah, that, actually, that's a really that's a really great way to put it because I truly do believe that art heals. You know, be it photography, music, writing, whichever art you choose to express yourself through. I think creativity and art really are healing. Yeah, definitely. So I'm happy that you think that that yeah yeah that you think that way that yeah yeah two artists that work I suppose. That's right. That's right. The other hundred um, is not is not stuck with with the conventional theme. That's why we have we expanded the the the, uh, the definition of healers beyond being medical frontliners, because you it's it's plans to to go into society and see how is everyone contributing uh, in their own way rather yeah, than just yeah. looking at medical frontliners. 
So it gives uh, it gives a more a richer narrative when we look back. You know, twenty years that oh we had this huge pandemic. What's everybody doing? Yeah. So really yeah, glad yeah. that that you picked, uh, you picked that, that that series, and we love it. Oh, I'm so happy you like it. I'm really really happy. Yeah. <laughs> so I think um, after going through the technicalities with you, like you know, black and white, analog versus digital, um, I want to discuss a little bit about. Mm, discovering a uh, uh, passion or appreciation or gratitude for life through the lenses. You as a photographer, and I believe uh, a lot of people who love photography uh, loves the fact that it captures the moment. Um, so what is it like for you? It, what kind of uh, emotional transformation, if, if I may say, that you go through each time, uh, every passing year you, you, you go through with your photography? That it, does it change you as a person? Does it does it help me see the world differently? Absolutely, absolutely, Jacqueline. You put it. You, you just put my words exactly the way that I wanted. You change the way you see the world, and that is so true. Like um, photography really helped me to see the beauty in everything. You know, um, be it like just a shadow, be it. Uh, a ray of light somewhere you, you learn to see the world differently like you learn to appreciate the little things and um, I think especially in today's world with COVID-19 mm -hmm. most of the world is under lockdown um, we're unable to go outside it's really time to appreciate everything that we have and to appreci appreciate the little things and I'm so happy mm -hmm that photography has helped me to do that, you know, to appreciate mm -hmm. little things, to see better to see, and to see the beauty in everything, you know, because um, even, you know, even in the uh, a recent, um, uh, how can I say, a recent post I had was of an old grandma. Grandmas are like one of my favourite subjects to photograph, but they're getting rarer and rarer, you know, the, the typical ones with the scarves around their necks, you know, the wrinkled faces and all that. Um, but, you know, she may think of herself as old and wrinkled and all that, but all I could see was a beautiful human being there, you know. So beauty is everywhere. That's my life motto. Let's put it that way since I took up photography. Yeah. I see. So that's why that's why you have a, your Instagram name is, is the marvels of daily life. So yes, every day there's yes. something to marvel and uh, appreciate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um the the name of my um, Instagram page actually comes from a quote by Robert Doineau, who is one of my favorite photographers. He was a humanist, mm -hmm. a French photographer, and um, I, I wrote it down here. His uh, his exact quote, and it's the marvels of daily life are so exciting. No movie director can arrange the unexpected that you find in the street, and I believe that is just so true because. I don't know, sometimes you'll see a guy on a roof with a lady with the pram and a, a graffiti on the other side, things that I would never be able to put together. Um, one of my personal favourite photos is a photo of a girl with an umbrella mm -hmm. um, and, it, and I called it Sin City because my friend uh, Super Jim, you can find him on Instagram, uh, suggested that that's a perfect name for it because it looks like a still from the movie Sin City. And to this day, I don't know how I captured it. You know, uh, I show it to people and they said, where'd the light come from? Where's this light come from? And I'm going, I have no idea. It was just like the unexpected. No film director can arrange the unexpected. That you and, and sometimes the, the, perfect, the, the perfect picture, the, the perfect photo, you, you don't realise it until after a while when it's, it's finally developed or, or yes. you put it on a computer and you think, oh, my God. That was the that, perfect moment. It's really and you didn't even realize that. It's absolutely true. I 100% agree with you, Jacqueline. Sometimes I come home and I think I've taken nothing today. And I would say like out of 30 days in the month, 29 are like that. But you just have to keep on going and going and hoping to get the right moment. And then sometimes you come home and you look and you think, oh, there's nothing here. And then all of a sudden it's like, wow, you, you're kind of blown away by what you caught and you didn't even realize it. <laughs> Right, right. And do you do you post every day? Is that is like like a, uh, like a practice, like a discipline for you? Uh, more or less every day, but I do take breaks occasionally, like for a week, because Instagram, uh, I call it a two-headed beast, if you can put it that way. 
on the one hand, it's so inspiring. And I've found so many wonderful photographers and um, artists on Instagram that I love going through their photos. But on the other hand, sometimes it really stifles your creativity. And sometimes, well, I'm going to admit it on live Instagram, that sometimes it really gets me down. And I think to myself, gosh, I'm never going to be that good. And I can't do photos like that. Right, so sometimes it's so scary. Yes, you start comparing and that's not a good thing. And I know that's not a healthy thing for me or for anyone. So sometimes I just need to take a break and say, okay, I'm not going to look at Instagram for a week or two weeks or a month or whatever. And it's interesting to find that sometimes in most cases, my creativity goes right through the roof. And I take photos that I would never have taken, you know, like mm -hmm. um, I took a, a break about two months ago and then I just walked around the city taking photos of raindrops, you know, like oh. uh, through windows and stuff like that. And and then I saw scenes that I'd never maybe would have noticed had I been on Instagram and, you know, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. <laughs> right, right. So, so yeah. instead of spending time scrolling, you were out there doing stuff, taking yeah. pictures and improving your skills. So I think uh, those who are watching, um, if you are interested in photography as well, and you, if you feel that, oh, I'm never going to be the, as, as good as this, this photographer who has like 20,000 followers, yeah. and it, it makes you like, oh, I might as well give up, right? So this is the no, advice that Mary is telling you. Don't give up. Do not give up. Um, yesterday I was feeling particularly down because I didn't pass in um, a photo contest that I was really like, you know, I know that the chances were very little that I would pass, but you do get disappointed nonetheless a little bit and your ego gets a little bit chipped. But, you know, you know, you kind of have to pick yourself up and say, okay, maybe my photography isn't that for that competition and that's okay. You have to do things for yourself, you know, at the end of the day, not for Instagram, not for the competitions. You have to do the photography for yourself. And if you're happy with your photos, that's the most important thing really at the end of the day. Day. That's it. Yeah, I, I, I truly believe that. I think, you know, photography in a way is an extension of yourself, of your, your character and what you believe in. Because, I mean, you're the one behind the lens. You, yep. you decide what to capture. So exactly. that, that thought process is you. So you shouldn't compare it with other people. You have your own unique perspective. So those who are listening, and if you feel that you are interested in photography, but you, you, you look at all the other great uh, um, uh, photographers out there on Instagram or on social media, and you feel that you'll never be as good as they are, but everyone starts somewhere. And it's, it just takes time to polish your skills, like what Mary is doing. Um, and I think having the discipline to post every, every other day, every day, um, somewhere without, you know, falling into the trap of, yeah. of yeah. The comparison, um, it takes a lot of, um, what is, a, a lot of maturity, I say. Yes, definitely, definitely. And, um, you know, um, you, you, it's good to be inspired by photographers, you know, like I said, there are so many amazing photographers out there, but try not to compare yourself to with them. Try to be inspired by them, but mm -hmm. have your own vision. Keep keeping your own vision, you know. It's hard to, really, when you're scrolling and scrolling and you think it's so much easier to copy, really. But mm -hmm. try to, yeah, yeah, just keep your own vision and believe in yourself. That's all, yeah. And, and for... This is the one question I ask uh, every every uh, top hundred that I interview is that for someone who wants to get started, what would be uh, your advice? How how do we get started? Is it get getting started? Into the camera? Is it starting an Instagram account? So what would you advise is the first step? So to ease yourself into a, a lifelong practice. Well, uh, like I said, maybe at the onset, um, have your camera with you at all times, really, and practice. Practice, if, if nothing else, if you're under lockdown, uh, you have your home, you have window light, you have, uh, you know, uh, artificial light. Try to practice like, uh, I know that when, when I went to my courses, we had to do practice with an egg of all things, but it's really good practice. You know, you get an egg in an egg cup and then you turn the light in different directions and you take photos and you see how does that affect 
you know, where the shadow is? How does it affect, like, um, how you lit the egg? You know, I mean, it sounds so ridiculous, but it's a really good exercise in studying light, you know? So uh, keep ex and keep experimenting as well. Uh, and an Instagram account, yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, it's a wonderful place to, you know, uh, see uh, what other photographers are doing and to highlight your own work as well. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. why not? Yeah, that's, Instagram that's definitely. That's really interesting. That's interesting where we just focusing on, on, on taking pictures of one or two very minimal objects and just see how many angles you can get out of it. Yeah, 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 exactly. And you so don't this is a tip where Mary went to school to learn. <laughs> This is a tip that Mary went to school to learn and she's giving you for free. So make sure you listen up. <laughs> there are, and YouTube is a wonderful, wonderful resource as well, like for learning stuff, you know, because uh, um, I don't know, for example, when I, I, I love rain and, uh, you know, lots of people ask me, how do you find time to take photos? Well, usually I take them going somewhere else for example i have a choir that i lead every friday so every friday i'm out and about taking photos because it's on my way to choir basically but when it rains that's it i get my raincoat i get my camera i get my rain cover for my camera and i'm out you know you're so excited um, about rainy days i love rainy days i'm a weirdo i know but i do <laughs> love rain I love photographing it. I love being in it and stuff. So, you know, but it took me a long time to understand how to take photos of rain as well, which light. And the best light is the backlight because you can see the raindrops, but you also need light on your subject. So, yeah, that's something I learned from YouTube, basically. You know, I, I watched how to take photos. So, take, so watch YouTube videos to, to expand your learning. Yeah, yeah. So there's it's plenty of time now. out there. Sorry, I didn't hear you, Jacqueline. Oh, so there's plenty of free resources out there. You don't need uh, too much money to get started then. No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. Mm -hmm. And even to have a website, it doesn't really cost that much these days. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Fantastic. So I think, um, so for those who just tune in, uh, my name is Jacqueline and I am the project manager for The Other 100. So we're speaking with uh, Mary today from Croatia. Um, she is one of our top hundreds and our um, representative. So she sent us a, a series of uh, uh, photos. So if you want to see what uh, her entry is about, so you can go to www.theother100.com and select uh, Croatia and you can see uh, Mary's entry. Um, now, before we sign off, Mary, why, why not share a few words with us um, about, I think you've seen the whole project. Yeah, maybe share some thoughts about uh, what you think uh, um, about the project, how you feel about it, and yeah, is there anything uh, uh, you like us to improve? Um, I think the project is wonderful. Uh, I, I am blown away by all the entries, seriously, and it's been wonderful connecting with the other photographers as well through Instagram and through the through the other hundred. Um, and I think there's nothing to improve. The only thing that I am really sad about, but I understand it's a very particular year this year, is that there won't be a hard copy, there won't be a book published of the photos. But I'm hoping that actually, some, actually. I, I just went to, I just went uh, uh, to a meeting with my a publisher, and in fact, we are publishing. So this is this is uh, the latest news. Uh, oh my we gosh. are. <laughs> we are publishing, um, and the details are out next year. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, I can announce it maybe uh, late January. Oh my so gosh, that is so awesome, Jacqueline! I can't believe it. That like my biggest dream is uh, well, maybe I shouldn't talk about it, but but uh, to have a book. Uh, so just to be part of the other hundred in a hard copy because it's so different as everyone knows like when you're looking through old photos of your childhood we don't print photos anymore do we so much they're all on our hard disks or on our mobile phones so but a hard copy of, of photos is so different to seeing something on the screen so I'm so, so it is it is yeah we oh, that's we... Right. We understand the, the value of having a book as well. That's why we, we try. Even if it's a, a, you know, a small batch, we try to print something. Oh, that's great, Jacqueline. I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs>
Yes. Yeah, so any any anything else that you would like to share with us? This is this is your airtime. Well, uh, you. Uh, I think um, when you were sending me some questions the other day, you said you asked me what was my proudest moment, and uh, yes, not to correct. sound like somebody yeah. that's sucking up or anything, because I'm already part of the one, the other hundred, so I don't need to suck up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but but seriously. Um, it really is my proudest moment to be part of the other hundred, you know, because it's such an important project and it's such a beautiful project, you know, healers, educators. This is such an important part of our society, of making our society better, yeah, um, to heal ourselves and to heal each other. You know, so to definitely being part of this project is my proudest moment so far as a photographer. And uh, oh, I just want thank to you thank you. So and I've, I've been very sincere and I would like to thank you and the whole team and and especially for your patience with me. How many times did I change my entry? I think it was four. No problem. <laughs> so, so thank you for being no, 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 okay. my entry. So, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no, I mean, um, with 100 artists, everyone has very particular requirements for their submission. <laughs> Really understand that, and I, I do my best to fulfill. Yeah, thank you so much for that, Jacqueline. For all of you, you oh, my, for your patience with patience with me and you know, my entry and everything, and the hundreds of questions and stuff. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Glad I could. Yeah. And for those of you, uh, do check out uh, uh, Mary's work um, at the her. Your handle is the Marbles of Daily Life. So look her up if you can't find her. Um, just look at uh, our one of our uh, picture on our feed. Um, look at look for the picture with the bright yellow and the red heart, uh, the, the stitch hearts. So that that's where you can find our account. Thank you. Thank all you right, I much. think I think that's all. That's all the time we have, Mary. I don't want to keep you for too long. And thank you so much uh, to everyone who who uh, is tuning in. So I'll see you next time. Um, so stay safe. And we, uh, the team, uh, would like to wish everybody, uh, you know, an early Christmas, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see uh, everyone again on on uh, on our live next week. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you to everyone at the other hundred, the whole team. Thank you to everyone who tuned in. Um, and as you said, an early happy Christmas to everyone, and Hanukkah and everything else. <laughs> Yes, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you again. No problem. All right. Bye-bye, Mary. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. You too.